And so that is the mission now of our program at Memorial Sloan Kettering, and I think others throughout the country and the world, is to start to better understand metastatic disease. And what do I mean by that? I want us to better understand metastatic disease as, in, as a, a function of their trajectory. That's longitudinal, meaning over time, as a function of therapy, and as a function of tumor and host biology. So better integrate biology to understand the trajectory that metastatic patients have. And in doing so, we can personalize approaches that are more enriching for the likelihood of success in these clinical trials by identifying a synergy between the local and systemic therapies. So what our group is doing is we're trying to take large sets of data of patients who've already been treated, as well as patients who will be treated in prospective registries, and start to understand the biology and how treatments that are directed against the tumor reprogram the tumor and reprogram the host tissues to, to effectuate a specific type of metastatic trajectory, meaning we will want to understand whether some patients will met out widely after they start therapy, and in what time frame versus which patients will not met out if you give them radiation. And the reason that this is all important um, is because we really want to bin patients into categories. We want to be able to better predict which patients should get local therapy and which ones should not get local therapy in the form of radiation. So if you look at this binning kind of um, simplistic binning strategy that we have, you have the two extremes. You have patients that are doing so well on systemic therapy that you don't even need to offer them radiation. And then you have patients who are doing so badly on systemic therapy, unfortunately, that radiation therapy will not matter. Then you have this large group in the middle who both have slightly poor prognoses or slightly good prognoses, but both sets of patients will benefit from local therapy. So we are using a, a multi-data approach to try to understand that. So in this slide here, in the left, it shows you a patients with metastatic disease, and it shows you a bunch of data underneath that uh, figure, a bunch of data that we collect, histopathology data, imaging data, genetic data, image, uh, um, um, proteomic data. Um, Dr. Das was talking about circulating tumor DNA type of data, so liquid biopsy data. We're collecting all of this data. And if a patient were not to get treated, it would be easy for us to follow these patients collect that same data over time and figure out when and in what frequency patients metastatic disease distributes um, um, as a function of the disease biology. But guess what? Patients get treated. We need to treat patients. But every time we treat patients, we reprogram their tumors and we reprogram their host tissues. So what our group is doing um, is trying to develop an AI approach or artificial intelligence approach and what I mean by that is as following. In, at point number one, we are trying to annotate where and when patients' tumors progress as a function of their time, as a function of the biologic matrix uh, matrices that we collect, and as a function of therapy. Then what we're trying to do is we're going to try to collect all of this data and develop predictive and prognostic markers to tell me, for instance, if I get a patient that comes to my clinic and it has been referred to me by a medical oncologist and the patient has one metastatic site, it seems like a slam dunk that I would say, hey, let's radiate this one metastatic site to, so the patient can remain on the systemic therapy because it looks like the systemic therapy has been working in 99% of the patient's body. But guess what? What if I were able to say that based on our predictive models, this patient is gonna develop 16 more METs in three months? then it makes no sense for me to radiate that patient and put them through you know, whatever limited toxicity that we might put them through. However, if you send me a patient with 10 METs, but I can say, hey, we're just in this situation with 10 METs, but if we radiate those 10, the patient will have a progression-free survival interval of three years, then by all means, we should try to safely treat those 10 METs. And this is what this model is really trying to enrich for. So in conclusion, I would argue that we need to keep doing these phase two and phase three clinical trials in the oligometastatic space, in the metastatic non-small cell lung cancer space to understand when radiation will be or should be utilized. We need to prepare to debate ambiguous findings and use biology, longitudinal biology to explain why some patients are responding and some are not responding. We need to develop these biomarkers that are predictive and prognostic of metastatic potential. 
We need to use and leverage large amounts of data in order to do this. And at the end of the day, we need to consider what is in the best interest of our patients, both with respect to quality of life and with respect to uh, um, survival outcomes. And so we've developed this practice patterns guidelines through different organizations, both on the North American side and Europe. But at the end of the day, I think the bottom three points are what's most important for our patients. Number one, I should have put number one, patient input is the most critical. How much they want to be treated, what they need to be treated, and when they want to be treated. And what's most important for them with, with respect to either quality of life or survival outcomes. And we need to leverage both. I think a multidisciplinary approach is important. And then I think we need to continue to understand what's going on in the setting of clinical trials to optimize our outcomes. And with that, I'll stop and be happy to take any questions. Thank you.